Yo, what is up, everybody? Welcome back to another video of Next to Bros Ramness. And today, well, technically, okay, earlier today I did make a video about um, the Morbius movie review. If you have not checked that out, go and check it out. Um, yeah, just go and check it out. Um, it is in my movie review playlist, but technically it's going to be the second video if you go onto my channel and just click on videos it'll be like the next one there because that was the most recent video i have up oh, so yeah so go check that out to go into my playlist and check out other movie reviews that greatly appreciate that greatly helps out channel a lot and i appreciate it um, so, if you are new here, welcome to the channel, I'm Nixter's Bros Ultimate, or you can just call me Nixter if you want. Um, I'm gonna be doing some movie reviews and whatnot, um, into the future, and I'm gonna just try to open up more and stuff. If you're new here, please give this video a like, comment down below, let me know what your favorite Spider-Man movie is. And, um, yeah, make sure you subscribe for more, that helps out the channel a lot. So guys, in this video, as you can see by the title of the video, this is going to be my ranking of all the Spider-Man movies from worst to best. Now, this isn't... Now, I mean, this is my list, but this isn't the right list, I guess. Definitely isn't, like, definitely isn't, in my opinion. Um, but, hey, I'm doing this just, I'm doing this just for fun because of the new Mobius movie that just came out today, but I saw it yesterday, so that's why I'm doing it today. And making this list today, so I decided, you know what, I'm like, I've never done this before on YouTube, never ever, so I'm going to do this now, see what happens, so this is going to be my ranking list of all the Spider-Man movies, yes, that includes, ta that t includes the Tom Holland movies, the Andrew Garfield movies, the Tobey Maguire movies, the Venom movies, and Morbius, and including Into the Spider-Verse as well. So, without further ado, let's get into it. So, guys, kicking off my list at the number 12 spot, we have Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Now, I get it. I already see people being like, well, why is it your least favorite? Okay, here's why. I am not a fan of the movie because everything that I wanted that movie to be, I wanted it to be in live action form. While, yes, it would have been... Well, yes, it's still a good movie. I'm not saying that it's the worst Marvel movie, once again, for the Dark World exist. All I'm saying is that it is, in my opinion, the worst Spider-Man movie. Um, and once again, this is for many issues. One being that I wanted to see Miles Morales in live-action form. Now, granted, this could happen with Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness if the rumors are true about the whole Jared Smith being in... Um, yeah, being in the Multiverse of Madness with reshoots, but because of the whole um, Bill Smith's Chris Rock slap, that could not happen. Who And they could announce that straight after Multiverse of Madness comes out and say, yeah, this was the plan, but they're doing reshoots, so I doubt that. But, yeah, like, that's that's what I wanted. Um, or Rock, I mean, or, yeah, Will Smith could be talking about something completely different entirely, but... But the words he said, who knows? But this is my list at number 12 because I want... Because Kingpin, we are probably going to get this in maybe the next Tom Holland Spider-Man movie. But if I want to see Kingpin fight Spider-Man, I want to do it against Peter Parker and Daredevil. Live action form, if we were going to see that. Well, yes, it has happened multiple times in animation and whatnot. I'm just not a fan of that, and I think it's about time that we go away from animated movies and TV shows um, and go into the live-action stuff, and I think that the next Spider-Man movie would be great with not only Spider-Man, Tom Holland, and Daredevil, or well, Charlie Cox's Daredevil fighting against Kingpin, but if you add Kate Bishop Hawkeye into the mix, I think that'd go well with the history that she had with Kingpin into the show. Now, granted, there are some ups to it, once again, the multiverse. I love the whole multiverse concept. Absolutely phenomenal. Or, well, I guess it's Spider-Verse on this occasion. But I love it. I love that Nicolas Cage played, um, I mean, voiced Spider-Man Noir. There's a lot of great things about it. But it's just that number 12 because, well, 
everything I wanted this movie to be, it was an animated form. And while, yes, it is, it has a very high rating for Spider-Man movies by Rotten Tomato, Rotten Tomato isn't right all the time, really. Like, while, yes, they are right about some movies sometimes, it's just other movies, on the other hand. Yeah, it's just... Yeah, in my opinion, it's just not that great, and I want to see a lot of things in live-action form. Like, now, granted, if this movie came after all the live-action stuff, I would have been fine with it. Honestly, I would have been fine with it. Like, even if we didn't get the Spider-Verse in live-action form quite yet, I would have been fine with it. I'm just hoping that they do across the Spider-Verse. Oh, part one, right? Um, okay. Now, number 11, it's Venom. Um, I originally had my number 10 spot here, but because of Morbius, you kind of already know where this is going, I switched it from 11 to 10, but Venom is now my least favorite live-action Spider-Man franchise movie, and there are a few th reasons why. One of them, while yes, Tom Hardy was great at Venom, he was terrific, he, I mean, he is terrific at Venom, because he technically didn't stop playing Venom, because Venom with be Carnage came out in October. Anyway, because of that whole thing happened, um, yeah, there was, yeah, I don't know. Okay. Something in my mouth. Blah. Anyways, okay. Riot. Let's just start off with that. I don't know too much about Riot. I, I mean, he was pretty corner. I kind of wanted him to be a bit more violent than he was. Because, I mean, look at Carnage. He was the right amount of violent. Because that's what Cleese Cassidy and Carnage is. So, that's great. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted him to be a bit more violent. And, yeah, I mean, I just thought the villain, like, even the guy. Not even the symbiote, but the guy who took over the right symbiote was just kind of a douchebag anyways, Teddy Brock and stuff. Not only that, but another big issue I have with Venom was all the jokes and the laughter. Like, I mean, look at the Batman. That, like, once again, I say, if it didn't have all those jokes in it, I would have been fine. But honestly, it's just not that. Like, look at Venom. While, yes, there was some parts where it was fun. It was just all that going on. I mean, the final battle scene was okay. I guess it was fine. I mean, I kind of enjoyed it, but I mean... They, it was like Riot trying, I already forget what it was, like they literally wanted to go on a rocket, and I think go back to their home world or something, but then Riot just pretty much blew up, and it was like, oh yay? And I don't get why, because honestly, if you really think about it, if Riot were to go into that rocket ship, go if he was going to go back to his um home world, then why would we worry about it? Like, why? What would be the biggest issue? Maybe Null? I don't I don't know. I mean, I'll get to Null later on in this list. But, I, I, I don't know. But, other than that, I mean, Venom's number 11 on my list. So, there's a lot of things that could have been changed and made it more enjoyable. But, yeah. Anyways, um, at number 10, I have Spider-Man Homecoming. Um, once again, I originally had it as number 11 on my list, but because of the Morbius movie, I was like, okay, they actually built up the Sinister Six. But other than that, it, they just, they just took too long. Now, granted, COVID did get in the way, and they could, and there was a lot of things that was going on. Now, granted, who knows, maybe that post-credit scene wouldn't have had happened if COVID went on. But I strongly believe that I still would have because why else would they have Michael Keane in that? Like, how would they explain it? So then, like, we might have not... Like, they could have literally cut him entirely. So who, who knows, honestly? Who really knows? But honestly, I mean, Michael Keaton was great at Vulture in that movie. Don't get me wrong. I love that Shocker was in it. But, I mean, I wasn't too big of a fan of Shocker being a henchman and how easily he was defeated and that there were two of him. Because I wanted Shocker to be like the Shocker. If I was wanting to have Shocker inside of a Marvel movie. And as like a main Spider-Man villain. I would want him to be the Shocker. Like I want him to be the guy that has like the pulse of fist. Which is like what he had. But it wasn't like the waves or whatever. Like it was just not how I planned the Shocker to be. 
I mean, the whole, I mean, okay, the homemade suit was great. I mean, for a Spider-Man movie with the funniness, it had to be kind of funny. But also, I mean, I love the video packaging. That was neat and all. But it was just kind of like, okay, like, where would they take it? And some of the other things that I'm not a fan of with this movie as well is of course with the whole Tony Stark Iron Man thing. While, yes, they are bonding in a way. Peter Parker and Tony Stark are bonding. They really aren't because Tony takes the suit away which he gave Peter at first and I was like okay not bad. I mean I love that they introduced the Iron Spider suit like at the end. I think it was a post -credit, no not post credit scene but like at the end of the movie. Like that was that was good. Um but see, another reason why it's only at number 10 it's not higher because of the post credit scene is because what the fuck is going to go on with Scorpion? Is he going to be part of the Sinister Six? Is he not going to be part of the Sinister Six? Was Scorpion there just to be there to say, hey, we have Scorpion inside the MCU? Like, we need we need the answers to that. And also, once again, I want a Spider-Man movie to be Spider-Man with no, no help. I want him... Just be Spider-Man. I think that this is what this next trilogy of Spider-Man and Tom Holland movies are going to be. He doesn't need help from anyone. Because, I mean, he technically got help from Nick Fury, a.k.a. Talos, from Far From Home. I'll get to that later on in this video. But, yeah, there were just stuff that made me, for, for, for uh, Spider-Man Homecoming, just made me go, yeah, it wasn't that great of a movie, and there were honestly parts that could have been cut out or wouldn't have been able to just not work entirely. Um, so, number nine, I have a list right here. So that's, if you see me looking down, that is why. So at number nine, I have Spider-Man. Yes, the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. Um... Honestly, this is probably... Well, yes, okay, a lot of people say that Spider-Man 3 is the worst Tobey Maguire movie. And I, I loved the... Uh, I love Spider-Man 3. I honestly did. I thought it was terrific. Um, so, yeah. Um. So, I thought it was terrific, but... Some people would say, nah, man, like, Spider-Man 3 should be right there. And, I mean, I get why I understand looking back on it. But watching Spider-Man, like, the first Spider-Man, like, there were parts where I enjoyed watching it. And, like, where it did tell the story of him. And, like, how Spider-Man came to be and stuff. It was just... And I love that the Macho Man Andy Savage, like, rest in peace to him. But I love that he was bones on that. Um... So, yeah, um, so, yeah, I don't know, I mean, Willem Dafoe was great as a Green Goblin, there was just, I don't know, my, my, my mind's blanket, like, I just really didn't have as much fun watching this as I did with the other movies, really, like, Spider-Man 2, I enjoyed watching, Spider-Man 3, I really enjoyed watching. Like, I watched that so many fucking times. Well, it's not funny. Like, trust me. I ask my grandmother and mother. Like, I watched that so much when I was a kid. And I still do. Like, just, for, like, nostalgia feels. And I love it all the time. I love Sam and whatnot. I'll get to that later on why I liked it. But that Spider-Man 2 compared to Spider-Man 1, it was just... I don't know. It's just not... Not a big fan of Spider-Man, the first one. I mean, Green Goblin, like, there were some moments where, like, I you wanted to be terrified. And there were moments where you really didn't want to be terrified. I mean, that whole scene with Green Goblin and Peter Parker on the rooftop of the building, I think just could have went out. I, I, that scene wasn't necessary. I don't know why they, that happened, but that did happen and it shouldn't have happened i mean the final battle scene was great i love how green goblin well norman osborne's words would don't tell harry and that was the exact thing mary jane told peter about whatever was going on with them being like yeah like don't tell harry because harry is bad technically and i'll, I'll get to him later but 
yeah, I'm just not that big of a fan of the first Spider-Man movie, and there's some changes that I would definitely make to that and make it a little bit better, but make it a little bit more Spider-Man-y. Um, so, speaking of a little bit more Spider-Man-y, at number 8, I have The Amazing Spider-Man. Um, this was great. Not as good as the first one, in my opinion, but it was great. I mean, not, yeah, not as good as the second one. But it was just a great one. I love Andrew Garfield. Andrew Garfield was amazing at Spider-Man. He's just terrific. Um, and I mean, there was that he's just wonderful. I hate that they didn't make the Amazing Spider-Man three. I kind of want them to do that so he could finally get his third movie, and then then make like a Sinister Six movie with not only the Sinister Six. But maybe even do like a two-parter to that with one of them being like the Sinister Six movie and another one being like Andrew Garfield going after like Vulture and Morbius, maybe even Craven the Hunter at one point. It was just a lot of things that could happen with that. And the Sinister Six kind of was setting up with that with the lizard and the post credit scene of this movie. And I mean, the guy who played Dr. Kokonos was great. I loved, I loved it. Um, Gwen Stacy in it with Captain Stacy, uh, Dennis Leary, because he's an asshole, holy hole. If you don't understand that, look up Dennis Leary, asshole. It's a song that he did. Trust me, you'll love it. Thank me later. Um, so I'm not calling him an asshole because I bet that he's a nice guy in person, but I'm making a joke to that song. Anyway, but he made, but he played terrifically at Captain Stacy. Andrew, you could really feel that, like, he loves Gwen, and that Gwen is just kind of like, yeah, like, she's super small, and, you could, like, you could tell she loves Peter as well, but, and that she wants to help him with stuff, and it was this whole thing, so, yeah, I mean, I love the school scene, that scene, especially with Stan Lee, was terrific, I mean, if there was anything that I wanted to change, I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, I went back and I watched it. I mean, compared to the other Spider-Man movies, it wasn't as good. I mean, Andrew Garfield, by this point, he was still kind of early on into acting days. Kind of. I mean, kind of in a way. I don't know when he first started. I don't know, like, how late this would be. And I know he didn't make many movies. But, I mean, with the whole, but I love that you have some more time with him and Uncle Ben. And going back to Spider-Man, I wish that we had more time with Tobey Maguire and Uncle Ben, and that's what we got with Andrew Garfield. Now, also, if I'm missing something, I believe that we were supposed to get the With Great Power Comes Great Responsibility line in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. And last time I checked, I don't ever remember Uncle Ben saying With Great Power Comes Great Responsibility in this movie. Not only that, but Peter never became a wrestler. I mean, he was just more of a high school boy and whatever whatever dr kakanas was like a father to him and he really didn't listen too much to uncle ben and whatever it was was, this whole thing i mean it was great it was terrific don't get me wrong it was just there was some moments well like yeah like that guy with the star on his wrist i don't ever remember if he got caught or not truthfully i don't ever remember that i don't ever remember them going back to it i mean the lizard was cool. I love the bridge scene. That's my favorite scene from the movie, no doubt. But I kind of wish they had some more interactions at first. But honestly, I just... which That's like my only complaint about that one scene. But other than that, I love how Spider-Man's like Spider-Man and whatnot. But one thing is that... Another thing that makes me not like... Like the only complaint I have about Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man... Is that he's not really too secretive quote-unquote, about his identity, more or less than Peter Parker and Tobey Maguire is, but, well, yes, he is secretive about it, it's just he's secretive about it with certain people, so, and Flash Thompson, I would have loved if he turned into Agent Venom, but, and he had the right build to it and everything, he had the part, he had the looks to it, and he was like an actual bully, but, other than that, I mean, I kind of wish we got him picking more on Peter Parker or whatever, because then by the time, like, once Peter had those spider powers, he just kind of went and was like, nah, man, let's do this. Like, that whole basketball gymnasium thing, while, yes, that is important and whatnot, I just wasn't a fan of that scene. Probably one of my least favorite scenes from that movie, but other than that, The Amazing Spider-Man is 
number eight on my list. Um, at number seven, we have Spider-Man 2. Now, Spider-Man 2 was terrific. Oh my god, a lot of people love this movie, and I understand why. Alfred Molina as Dr. Octopus was just amazing. Um, like, Tobey Maguire and that with the whole train scene and, like, his half bows giving him the mask. Like, that scene by far my favorite. I think that's everyone's favorite scene, no doubt about it. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's number seven. Are there some things I could change about it? Maybe. I mean, I kind of would. A big part of it is the fact that I would kind of want um, more things with, um, I, I would kind of want more interactions between uh, Dr. Otto Octavius and Peter Parker. I don't know why my mind blanked out. I started to think of Mary Jane, which I'm not a big fan of her. Like, going to that whole Peter Parker, Mary Jane thing, like, if that was... Like, that scene between them outside when Peter was taking the trash out, that wasn't that wasn't necessary. That wasn't, I could have taken that out. Like, I'm not a big fan of Mary Jane or the girl who plays her, but there, there was that. Um, and I mean, I don't, I mean, while yes, she did play a good part in, like, the uh, final battle scene, I mean, it was that, but once... Otto Octavius turned bad, well, turned into Dr. Octopus, he was like, oh, hey, like, I'm evil, and he, he did amazing at that one. Like, Alfred Molina is just a really good actor, and behind the scenes, he's a really funny guy as well. But, and, and for him to be, like, taking the whole, like, Aunt May thing, like, poor Aunt May, she goes through everything in the Toby Maguire universe, but I honestly don't even remember that I took it. Ant Mantle now, so that that scene could kind of just get out of it, make it go a little bit faster. But I don't know. There there are just some other things that make me go, yeah. Um. So like this could have been better, but I don't know. It's that's just my opinion. Like nothing can really change in it, but there are some things that can change in it. It's just this whole thing. But I mean, it's coming in at a strong seven. Out of 12, which isn't too bad, but it kind of is because it's more than halfway, but it's just more than halfway by one. So, I don't know. There's some things that could have definitely been better with it and more interaction between Otto and Peter and all that. Kind of like what we got with Kirk Connors and um, Peter Parker, but that's that. This is a whole nother different new universe so yeah um at number six we have morbius now i just did a react now i just did my review i'm just gonna make it short i thought jerry leto was great in it something i forgot to mention before jerry leto was phenomenal at playing morbius i thought that he played the role absolutely well super super good so there's that um and then um, yeah, I can't really say too much about it. I mean, I, I'm glad that they were finally opening up to the multiversal Sinister Six. If there was anything I would change, I would change the predictability. I'm not saying that I would change much of these going down into, like, my top five. It was just numbers 12 through 6, like, like, there was just a lot that is just... Yeah, I just don't... It was just... Morbius was just a little bit too predictable. I think that's the only complaint I really have about it. Other than that, great movie. I already did a movie review on it. Go check that out. But that's just... That's just my list and how I felt about it. Um, So we're finally coming to out my top five. With number five being Spider-Man Far From Home. I love Mysterio. I will say this right now. Mysterio is one of my all-time favorite Spider-Man movies. I mean, yep, Spider-Man movies, uh, Spider-Man villains. Like, he's number two with Electro. I love Mysterio and Electro. They're so good. I, I love... Like, I just love Mysterio. And Jake Gyllenhaal in that was great. He was such an amazing cast role to be a part of. Because I'm like... Because after I saw it, I'm like, dude, I'm like, Jake Gyllenhaal is really good. Because he's actually going to be in a movie called Ambulance. And that movie just looks 
it, it looks phenomenal. Like, my mom and I, we were always like, when is it going to come out? When are we going to go see it? Like, because we, we need to go see that movie. So I'm probably going to be doing a movie review on that, no doubt about it. But I'm glad that they casted Jake John Hawes the rule. Not only that, but I love the Secret Wars tease with Talos and the other scroll girl. Um, and whatnot, whatever the fuck Talos' girlfriend's name is. Good for her, I guess. Um, so, yeah, I mean, other than that, I love that the elementals were in it. I love that they brought in the multiverse and, like, oh, yeah, by the way, like, He's from Dimension Blah 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 and like Dimensional Rift. Kind of kind of a foreshadowing to um kind of a foreshadowing to Spider Man Away Home in a way. So these are the multi dimensional rifts. I mean I love the interactions that we see between Peter Parker and Mysterio as well, Quentin Beck. And I love how everything, like almost everything he does, if not everything Mysterio does is an illusion. I love that because he is the master of illusions. So, yeah, like there's there's a lot. I can't really change too much about this movie. Like I can't change anything about it. Like I loved it coming out of the theater. Like it's just so good and Jake Gyllenhaal was amazing in it. Once again though, I love that Samuel L. Jackson played Nick Fury in it. But only for the short feuds. Well, no, he was actually in it longer. He technically played Nick Fury for that movie and whatnot. But it was Taylor disguising himself as Nick Fury. And Nick Fury's on the school plan and whatever. So, so yeah. Um, so, I thought, so, I thought that that was nice. Um, there was another post credit scene. No, that other post credit scene was the whole beginning of Spider Man No Way Home with the whole like WTF moment, like the whole World Knowing Peter Parker. Like that set up for No Way Home well. Like that was so good and I'm glad they did that. I love the Morton Man was in it. In fact I have the Morton Man Lego set right over there. He was terrific. I he was a terrific addition in that. Um the stealth suit that he that Spider Man had Amazing! I love that. Well, Night Monkey is probably one of my favorites, and I'm and what I'm glad for Night Monkey is that he's kind of his own separate character in a way, and that they have still don't know who Night Monkey is, even though he was Peter Parker's Spider Man. They still don't know who he is because they think he's somebody completely different. So that that was funny. That was so that was just great, and just seeing like. Michelle Jones, MJ, Zendaya, um, and Zendaya's great at being MJ, and we finally see Ned and Peter connecting more than what we did in Homecoming, it was just, it was such a great movie, and I'm really sad that the whole thing happened with No Way Home, but honestly, this movie was just perfect for a Spider-Man movie, and just, Mysterio was just great in it. Um, at number four, we have The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Once again, people are probably going to be like, why the fuck isn't this last? Or why does this come before blah, blah, blah? Here's why. <clears throat> um, so... <clears throat> sorry. So, here's why. Um, it, it was just great. I mean, once again, Andrew Garfield, terrific in that. Jamie Foxx, amazing as Electro. I love Electro, and this made me have... Like, this movie made me grow my love for Electro more. Like, any and all, every comic book I read or any and every TV show I watch with Electro in it. A movie, which he was only in two. Amazing Spider-Man 2 and Spider-Man No Way Home. It, it was great. So, and I love that. That was terrific. Um, but not only that, but whoever played the Green Goblin in that. Played Harry Osborn Green Goblin. He was pretty good. I mean, I'm glad that... We got to see some sort of inter interaction between Green Goblin and um, Spider-Man. Now, granted, if it would have been a cool surprise to keep Harry Osborn as the Green Goblin and not shown in the trailer, but have him as, like, whenever he's coming down with that, like, he won, like, the spider thing. 
and like we just see him screaming and then we go wait what the fuck is that supposed to mean and then he gets onto the glider i think that's the only thing that i change about it but other than that and not shown in the trailer but other than that everything from the movie was just so fucking good like it was just amazing and i think everyone's post favorite post credit scene might have been right before paul g Marty the rhino came in which i'll say this right now best rhino suit ever Hands down, I love the armor and the guns and stuff, and that he has missiles and that he can go down like a rhino and go after Spider Man. Like, I think, like, that was just so good. Now, Paul Giamatti as Rhino, he might not come back to that, and I understand why. A lot of people, not a lot of people are a fan of that, but honestly, like, I still remember sitting in the movie theater watching this movie when I was a kid and enjoying it, and every time it's on the TV, I go, Yay, The Amazing Spider Man 2, and I sit down and I watch it all the time. So, trust me, it's, this movie was just great, and I love it as, like, a Spider-Man fan. I love that Peter and Gwen, and, uh, Gwen Stacy was kind of getting together, and that Peter wouldn't ever leave Gwen alone after they broke up, and, like, he wanted to watch her and stuff, and, like, make sure that, like, to keep a good eye on her and whatnot, because he's lonely without her. Like, I, I loved that. That was, that was amazing. No pun intended. Um, it was just so much about that. And in the background, you could see a black shadowy figure, and that is actually scene that I'm talking about with him, like, perched up somewhere, like, on this guy thing. And someone swinging across um, buildings, and that's actually Venom. That That is Venom. I don't know if they ever came out and fully said, hey, like, here we go with Venom. Th there was that so uh just great movie and i'm really disappointed that it, it did horrible in box office and that not a lot of people like it like it's like you don't hear people go oh hey thor um the dark world was shit cancel thor no they just went nah man it's just cancel andrew Garfield spider-man it like they pretty much didn't even give him a chance to do it to do a redo over after that and give him the Amazing Spider-Man 3 and set that up. But I mean, if they're going to set it up with Tom Hardy Venom, this would be great. This would be a perfect time for them to do it. Not only that, but once again, Multiversal Sinister 6. And we were going to have a Sinister 6 movie as well. Like, that was huge. So, yeah, like... There was just so many good things about this movie that I loved. While, yes, there were so many villains in it, I think... All three villains played out a very good part in it. I love the kid with the scene, the scene with the kid and Spider-Man helping him with his windmill and stuff, and then talking to him, like, because that's what Spider-Man is. Once again, phenomenal. Now, mm, I don't want to say phenomenal opening. The opening of that movie was with the parents, but that that's kind of like shows how they died, which is a good thing because we've never seen that ever. So I'm so that's a really good thing that they added that because that's something that we've never seen ever. So, I'm um, glad with the whole, like, Ben Parker thing with the train and stuff. Like, that was, like, that was smart. So, there's just a lot of good things that they did right about this movie that I don't think, that I understand why a lot of people won't care for it. But at the same time, me looking at it, it was just phenomenal. Once again, Andrew Garfield was just terrific at that. Um, so, at number three, we have Spider-Man 3. I actually was going to have this at number two. But then I thought about some more compared to my number two, and I think you guys will know what that will be based off of my talking about uh, Spider-Man Away Home. Um, so, yeah, you'll, you'll know. Um, so, just Spider-Man 3, I love it every single time. I go back and I watch it for nostalgia purposes, but I was born in 05, so about two years, a year and a half Spider-Man 3 came out in 07. Um, so, and then as I got older, I remember watching it, and I'm, I really enjoyed it when I was a kid. I thought Venom was terrific. And I, I love that Venom. I get it. Like, Venom's supposed to be scary, but I think that's, like, the scariest we might get Venom. Because he, I was expecting him to be scarier whenever the 2018 Venom Tom Hardy movie came out, but he really wasn't that scary looking back on it and a lot of people were like yeah he wasn't really scary because i because like we get people at the comic shop all the time and they're like yeah like my kid's kind of too young for it i'm like dude no your kid is not too young for that venom i'm like they might be too young quote unquote for spider-man 3 but even at that though 
that one isn't scary. More or less Tom Hardy's. Like, like that one wasn't scary, but this one would be a little bit scarier. And I see, and because it actual because this Venom, oh yes, yeah, Spider Man with the black suit looks so badass in that movie. That's another thing I loved about it. Him saying, "Oh yeah, I have the black suit now. I can officially whoop Sandman's ass." He did. Sandman, Thomas Hayden Church was so good in that movie. Like he was amazing. Like I loved it. It was it was terrific in that, and they couldn't have made a perfect role for that. And just some fight scenes and whatnot in that. And with the whole Harry Osborn becoming Green Goblin, helping out Peter at the end. It was just... It was terrific. I love it. I'm glad that they did what they did with that. Once again, not a big fan of the whole MJ thing, but... That was great, and especially with, um... The whole scene... The whole moment, I should say, where... There was the final battle scene, and, um... J. Jonah Jameson's like, hey kid, how much for that camera? Camera, and then they go pay her, and then he's like, wait, this isn't even real. She's like, not too bad. Like, it was funny. Like, and it was. I love that inter that final interaction we had with, um, Peter and Harry, right before Harry died. It was, it was great, and it was emotional, and I kind of wish we had Spider-Man 4, because then we would have gotten more villains and whatnot. I, I kind of want to see what that would have been like if that movie was equally as good as Spider-Man 3. Um, so, at number 2, we have Venom with the Carnage. This movie was great. Definitely, picture moment was a, was a church scene where Carnage raised up to the glass thing, and then that whole scene, like, him having the X and whatnot and his stuff, like, that was terrific. Other than that... I love the Cleese Cassidy backstory of him, like, being a serial killer ever since he was a child, because that's what he was. He is a serial killer, and he was gonna die. But then, the only thing that I don't like about this movie, that I fit, that I had it at number three, but the more I thought about it, I said, take that away, and this was a perfect movie, was how he became Carnage, when he bit Eddie Brock, and then had his blood mixed with the Venom DNA into Cleese Cassidy and whatnot, and he became Carnage. Like, that I wasn't a fan of, but honestly, looking at it, it was a good idea. I love, um, Thrasher, I believe it was. No, Toxin. It was either Toxin or Thrasher, of how they're gonna set him up. I think it was Toxin. Um, I believe it's Toxin. Um, with Toxin and setting him up in the next movie, that was great. I honestly thought it went... I didn't know that Carnage's... That Venom was Carnage's father until... Um, Carnage was like, father, and the priest was like, yeah. Like, I thought that was funny. He's like, no, not you, father. Father, when he pointed at Venom. I was like, wait, what the fuck? And so that was... Um, that was big. Like, I love the, oh shit, that's red one thing. And then... So, yeah. It was just, there was a lot of great things about it. It was just, I mean, the acting in it was terrific. I love how Venom wanted, um... Eddie Brock and What's Your Face to get back together, but it ended up not happening. I love the whole Mrs. Chan thing being there and her knowing that Venom is Eddie Brock and whatnot. Like, that was great. Um, so yeah, I mean, Venom, I mean, they talked about Lethal Protectors, so I hope Venom 3 is called Venom Lethal Protectors. And I would be very Venom, I would be very Venom. I mean, I would. But no, but I'd be very disappointed if um, it wasn't called Venom Lethal Protector because they pretty much teased and went, yeah, like, it's gonna be the next thing in the movie, so Venom Lethal Protector, Venom 3, that's, that's pretty much what it is. So I, once again, with the whole multiversal outbreak, um, Tom Holland universe thing, and he's like that guy, and then he liked him like he knew who he was, not, not only that, but another thing that people don't pay attention to is that he wanted everyone to remember who was Spider-Man still knows. And Venom, he said before, was something along the lines of sharing a multidimensional th brain thingy with um, uh, the different symbiotes of the universe. So he could share that brain with another... 
yeah, like a nut, like uh, the Venom from Spider-Man Three, which would be cool, but yeah. So there was that. It was just a lot of great things about this movie. That was really a shocker to me. Like my mom and I, we came out of the movie like, dude, like Venom is MCU canon now. So that was great. And speaking of MCU canon, uh, my number one. I don't even. I don't even need to look at that. I don't know why I was number one. Spider-Man No Way Home, of course it was going to be number one. Who, you would be surprised, I would be surprised if I clicked on a movie that said breaking every Spider-Man movie, and this will not be number one. This movie is just fucking great. If you've seen it, you know it. I don't think I need to explain anything. I mean, I do if you haven't seen it and you want to know about it, it or need to explain why, but I don't fucking know. I'm just going to break down all the big things. Phenomenal acting. Great bringing characters back from the multiverse, like Alpha Molina, Jamie Foxx, um, Thomas Hayden, Church Lizard, all of them, right, I, it was saddening for the, um, Aunt May death, and it was supposed to be sad, and I love how they added the multiverse with the interdimensional cracks, and you see people like Imposter, and Craven the Hunter, and a rhino from a different universe, and the whole Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield coming back after years, which I still can't believe. Like, in Charlie Cox being the lawyer of, well, Matt Murdock, I should say. Um, be, well, Matt Murdock, Charlie Cox, and that movie. It was... Just everything about this movie was fucking great. From the humor and laughter to the crowd reactions to literally the simplest things. Like, William Dafoe's Green Goblin, I think I might be more terrified now. Like, I feel like if Green Goblin was real, I'd shit my pants. I think a lot of people would. Like, I'd, like, I'd just see them and be like, oh, fuck. Like, Green Goblin's real. I'm, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. I'm just, I would just literally stand there and go, well... Even if I run, that's not going to do anything. I, I, I just wait. Like, I would be terrified after this movie if he was real. Like, if he didn't, if Willem Dafoe didn't come back, I would have been super fucking disappointed. Willem Dafoe is a great actor, and he was phenomenal in this movie. So, it was just everything about this movie was great. Once again, 10 out of 10. This is my favorite movie by far, no matter what. The CGI effects were amazing. It was, like... Just the acting was phenomenal. Just the storytelling was incredible. Like, I love that Doctor Strange was in it to set up Multiverse of Madness very well. And possibly Multiverse of Sinister Six. And all of that. Just everything. I love that Venom, Eddie Brock, was inside of the mid credit scene um, of that. And then we got... Yeah, like, I love how he was, like... In the mid credit scene, and then we got the Venom symbiote once he went back to his universe. But he could still have Venom with him in that universe, but the Venom symbiote that stayed there could be a different Venom symbiote. Like, maybe one that they didn't know about. Venom intentionally made a little spawn baby Venom to make it, the, make it that Venom in that universe. But guys... Honestly, that's just my opinion. And once again, this is my list of Spider-Man movies were, uh, ranked from worst to best. So, yeah, I'm working on another side of this, and that's my top 10 WrestleMania matches. Trust me, I just need to go through that. I just need to go through my list and say, oh, yeah, I think I like this like this one more. And then I have an honorable mention down. I might have another one down, maybe. So, yeah, so let me know what your guys' list is. Once again, my list isn't the right list. It's my list. So, yeah, let me know what your favorite Spider-Man movie is or what your, and what your worst and what your least favorite Spider-Man movie is, I should say. Thank you all for watching. Make sure you leave a like, comment down below, let me know about that, and subscribe to your channel. It helps out greatly. Peace.